Hello, my name is Todd Carden. I am an MSW student at the University of North Dakota. Today I will demonstrate proper administration of the Substance Abuse Subtle Screening Inventory Adolescent Version 2. The SASE A2 evaluates clients 12 to 18 years of age for the likelihood of a substance abuse or dependence disorder. It is not intended to prove a diagnosis, but to be one component in a comprehensive evaluation process. The SASE A2 should only be administered by trained human service providers who have received adequate instruction on proper administration protocols. This video provides a brief overview of those protocols, but by itself, this video should not be considered sufficient training. The first step in administering any screening instrument is to make yourself thoroughly aware of its evidence base as well as any precautionary statements made in the professional literature. The SASE Institute conducted 16 years of research to develop the adult version and another six years to develop the current ver adolescent version. Their research indicates a 94% instrument accuracy. Independent research has been limited. However, the same can be said for virtually all widely available instruments of this nature. Therefore, the SASE A2 remains a reasonable choice for evidence-based practice with adolescent substance abusers. Not significantly affected by age, gender, ethnicity, education, employment status, living situation, prior legal history, or general level of functioning, the SASE A2 is appropriate for use in multiple human service settings and with diverse populations. Though the adult SASE has a Spanish version, unfortunately only an English version of the adolescent SASE currently exists. Before administering the SASE A2, instruct respondents for which time period you would like them to answer the questions. The instrument provides four options. The respondent's entire life, the past six months, the six months before a specified date, the six months since a specified date. The SASE A2 has been used pre-test, post-test style by multiple researchers to evaluate program efficacy. So you can retest much earlier than six months if so desired. Explain to the respondents that you cannot help them interpret or answer the questions. The merit of this instrument is compromised if you in any way introduce your influence or perspective. Assure respondents that this is not a test, so they don't have to worry about wrong answers. They only have to concern themselves with answering honestly and to the best of their abilities. Side 1 presents respondents with a set of straightforward, face-valid scenarios pertaining to drug and alcohol consumption. Ask respondents to use the four-point ordinal scale to indicate how often they have experienced those scenarios during the specified time period. It's important to emphasize that these questions do not apply to medications used in prescribed manners, but they do apply to medications abused in non-prescribed ways. The B items on the bottom of page 1 are designed to help provide a richer diagnostic picture though responses to these items do not bear upon the SASE's 12 subscales. Information captured here is nevertheless quite valuable in terms of severity assessment and treatment planning. Knowing at what age a child started using is certainly an important piece of the puzzle, as is how substance use has affected the child's academics or legal standing. Side 2 instructs respondents to choose true if an item strikes them as true or mostly true, or false if an item strikes them as mostly false. Be sure to have the adolescent fill out the demographic information at the bottom of the sheet after he or she answers the 72 true-false questions. 
to score the face validity alcohol and the face validity other drug subscales on side one, simply tally all the responses in the columns, then record the scores on the profile sheet. The SASE A2 is normed for both male and female, so be sure to use the correct side as indicated by the M or the F next to gender. Now turn the instrument over and use the provided mylar sheet to line up the four guide squares at the top and the bottom of each column. The first subscale is family and friends risk, i.e. social risk factors. Once the columns are aligned, you simply count the filled in items circled by the mylar sheet and record them on the provided profile sheet. Do the same for the remaining subscales. Now check to see if the scores qualify for any of the nine rules on the right side of the sheet. Any rule marked yes indicates a high probability of a substance abuse or dependence. 15 or less on the secondary classification scale indicates substance abuse. 16 or more indicates substance dependence. Note that further assessment or reassessment is indicated if the validity check score is four or more. The SASE A2 can be quite helpful in providing initial directions for treatment planning. For example, a family and friends risk score in the 98th percentile can indicate the need to place extraordinary emphasis on support system interventions. A high substance related attitude score might indicate the need for some cognitive restructuring. Affirmed true false statements such as at times I feel worn out for no reason at all might be pointing at some underlying depression that may or may not be attributable to the substances. Items such as, it really doesn't bother me that much to see animals suffer in conjunction with a high correctional involvement score uh, might warrant further investigation into the possibility of a conduct disorder. However, I caution you not to draw diagnostic conclusions based solely on the SASE A2. The trained human service professional will investigate further by administering other reliable and valid screening methods and by asking open-ended questions such as, so, I see that you indicate at times you feel worn out for no good reason. Would you please tell me more about that? Thanks for watching.